Hi, and welcome to Smooth On YouTube Live. My name is Kevin McDonald, and I've been a painter and illustrator for over 40 years and part of the Smooth On team for over a decade. I'm going to show you the basics of how to use Maker Pro Paint and explain the benefits of using this new paint system. I'm joined today by Alex, working the video, and our moderator, Jeff. So feel free to ask any questions in the chat. So to begin with, what is Maker Pro Paint and what advantages does it offer? It is water-based. It is UV resistant. It, no VOCs. It is Class A flame rated. Supreme scratch resistance. And I'll show you an example. Dries to a matte finish. As a painter, I'd love to have that matte finish. So that's great. Can be used on rigid and flexible surfaces, so it's really important. Can be brushed, rolled, or sprayed. Maker Pro Paint is available in the standard colors. There's 18. There's fluorescence, which there's 12 in that line, and four metallics. It can be used indoor and, really important, outdoor applications. So that's really important. So what industries or applications would use Maker Pro products? the Maker Pro paints. Big theme parks, uh, as an example, uh, Disney, Universal Studios, museums, zoos and aquariums, cosplay, custom floats like the Macy's Day Parade, casinos and resorts, props, shops, haunted houses. So uh, a lot of different industries would use this product. And they do, currently. What we will learn today, we're going to learn about surface preparation with your surface, prepare that, the difference between flex additive and the adhesion promoter, and when to use them, applying the adhesion promoter to a rigid surface, mixing the flex with the paint, make a pro paint, and brushing onto a flexible surface, and the difference there. Using make a pro paint reducer or distilled water to thin. Um, it's important with the reducer if you're doing a spray application. I would use the reducer. It works better than distilled water. I just want to make a point there. Mixing and brushing Maker Pro Paint onto a rigid casting. We're going to show that also. So, uh, what materials are we going to use today? So, the Maker Pro Paint, 18 colors in the standard line, and that's right here. So, you can see these. Uh, these come in pint containers, like this, or you can actually get gallon units. Let me just show you here. So if you're doing a big project, we're going to talk about the uh, flex additive and how to use that and mix it with the paint. We are going to talk about the adhesion promoter, and this is for rigid surfaces, so you prepare that first using the adhesion promoter. Uh, we're also going to use the reducer. The reducer is used to thin the paint. I like to do that a lot. I like to work in thin layers. You can build up, do multiple layers, and you really get a nice paint job. So, Alex, we, uh, what features? The features, uh, uh, adhesion promoter. It bonds to rigid surfaces. So there could be a rigid urethane, a rigid urethane foam, epoxy, plastics, wood, fiberglass, aluminum, concrete, plasters, steel, a variety of surfaces. Um, if you're unsure, do a little small scale test with the paint and the adhesion promoter to make sure. Flex additive. So the flex additive bonds to flexible surfaces. Uh, semi-rigids, fabrics, flexible urethane foams, urethane rubber, latex rubber, including EVA foam. So there's a lot of different surfaces. This paint can rigids and flexibles, really a wide variety. So we're going to thin Maker Pro Paint with the reducer. I can show you that. That's a, a clear water-based dilutant. Um, you can use distilled water. But for airbrush or spraying, uh, the reducer works better. So you can use this 
for rolling or brushing application. I'm going to just be doing some brushing today, so uh, some little simple demos. Things to remember that are important. Do not use the adhesion promoter when painting flexible surfaces. Okay? Do not use the flex additive when painting rigid surfaces. Maker Pro paint will dry to a matte coat in about 10 or 15 minutes. So if you're painting, by the time you get to another spot on your piece, a lot of times that paint's already dry. So it's nice. You can just keep that creative process going. Always conduct a small scale test first, like I mentioned. Um, Pre-mix the Maker Pro paint in the containers. So there can be some settling with a lot of different uh, materials. It's a good idea. You can get a wooden paint stick. Um, just mix that up, stir it up in case it's settled before you start. Really, really important, once you are done painting, you have to wait a full 48 hours to get the full physical strength and scratch resistance. So it's, it's really important. So don't try scratching that piece right after you painted it. And if you're doing a flexible piece, don't bend it at, before that 48 hours. If you crack it, well, you messed it up already. So, so really important. Maybe don't leave it around if you painted something on a flexible piece. People come around, that there's a tendency to pick that up and try to bend it. Put it aside. So the, wait the full 48 hours. And actually, after 48 hours, it gets even tougher. So it, it's amazing. It really is. So uh, what I'm going to do is show some examples of some pieces that were painted with Maker Pro Paint. I'll start behind me here. Here's a mural that was painted. And uh, I think the adhesion promoter was actually used on this. And uh, then the Maker Pro Paint. So that, that was a nice job that... Uh, was done there. Um, there is the metallics. Here is a frame with the gold metallic that was sprayed. So that, that gold works really nice. Now here is a vine. This vine is our Simpac 80 urethane rubber and it was painted. But look at, look at that flexibility. It doesn't even crack. So that really works great. We have some other pieces here. I have a little piece here. This is a cosplay piece. So uh, this was on our 57D, and, uh, which is a semi-rigid, and it was painted with the Maker Pro paint. So the adhesion promoter was used on this first, and then they waited 30 minutes, and then start painting with the Maker Pro paint. So uh, that is a neat little piece. Here is a little logo, Chavant logo, and this is on a polymer modified gypsum. This is our Duo Matrix Neo, and I did just a couple coats of the red right out of the container, so I got a nice flat, you know, look to that. So that that's a simple little piece. What else we have here? We one of my colleagues painted this uh, a Smooth Cast 300 which is a rigid urethane, and it cures white. And uh, a little winter scene here, Christmas scene possibly. And uh, what we have here, show a metallic again. This, Mermaid, the metallic paints were used on here, and you can really see how that shines. This was on our Onyx, which is a, a rigid urethane resin, and it cures black. So that's uh, the metallic there. I have another piece back here. Let me bring it over. This was done in a rigid urethane foam. I'll show you the back so you can see. So that was casted in a mold. And then the adhesion promoter was brushed on, let that dry, and uh, then just painted on that surface. So uh, you have a lot of control. I like to work thin, so I'll do multiple layers. I have a lot more control that way. I have another piece here, a rigid. This is an alien. So this particular piece was actually sculpted with our alien clay. A mold was made, and it was rotocast with our 65D urethane resin, and then backfilled with a rigid foam. 
And this piece has a lot of detail. Uh, you can really see the detail on here. So I use the reducer. I like to thin it out. If you have a lot of detail on a piece like this and you go too thick with the paint, you're gonna fill in all the detail and you're gonna lose it. So using the reducer, I'm able to thin that and I can just do multiple layers and I can retain all that detail. So that's really important. So that was kind of a neat piece. See how lightweight that is too. So now I'll, I'll touch on some of the flexibles. So what I have here, just shows you how flexible the material is. This was on our Flex Foam at 15, and just a thin little casting in a mold, and painted, I think, two, two coats. But, I mean, I could roll this thing up, and it doesn't crack. You can scratch it. It works great. Now this, this face here was our Simpac 60, just a very thin casting, so very flexible. And uh, I painted this. This on the bottom here of the face was our metallic silver. Then I used the standard line, the 18 colors I had mentioned, and there are four metallics I mentioned also, and the fluorescents, which are 12 in that line. But it's just, this stuff just works great. I can roll this up. Look at that. I mean, it just bonds so well. Now, you have to remember to wait that 48 hours. This has even been longer. It's even gotten better. So it just works great. I have some broccoli over here. This was, I think, our KX Flex. 60, I believe, and uh, use the, the flex additive. So the, these flexible castings, um, really important. You, you mix the flex a one-to-one -one with the Maker Pro paint, and I'll touch on that a little further. So uh, just paint it, and that looks pretty real. We have this duck. This is a flex foam 14, I believe. So, I mean, it just, you know, you can really twist that. And then the scratch resistance just works great. So that, that's uh, the duck here. And uh, this just shows the flexibility on this Day of the Dead face. So I could really twist that. Now I have another example that I'm going to show you, a Day of the Dead face. And then I'm going to have Alex actually show you a video. This are the colors in the line. So Alex, you want to go to that video? So there's the, the colors. There are 12 colors in the fluorescent line, and uh, it's just very bright. And you'll be able to see when we put the, it's a different Day of the Dead face that was painted, and you'll be able to see that and how, how much that lights up. Look at that. I mean, that, that works great. That really pops and uh, really bonds so well to flexible surfaces, which is really tricky thing to do. So uh, that looks great. Thanks, Alex. So here's the, the face that you saw lit up under the black light. And uh, so that's flexible materials I wanted to cover there. Oh, and that was the unpainted, just so you can see that right there. That's the unpainted face. All right, so now we're going to talk about surface preparation. What is your painting surface? Is it a, a rigid urethane? Uh, is it concrete? Is it a rigid urethane foam? I showed you that example. 
um, wood, fiberglass, aluminum, whatever it is. Uh, what you have to do is prepare that surface. So make sure that surface is free of dust, uh, grease, uh, oil. It could be the oil from your hands, other contaminants. If there's any flaking or any chalking, clean that off also. And uh, what you could do is sand it with sandpaper, if you have to, to roughen up that surface. Use a coarse scuff pad, uh, just dry sand only. And then when you want to clean that off, you could use something like a ice, isopropyl alcohol, which you would sand that piece and then wipe it off afterward and let that flash off until it dries completely before you start painting. So uh, that's very important. So I have a little demo here I think I'm going to do for you right here. So for surface preparation, this is a little frame that was done, our onyx, which is a rigid urethane resin, and uh, that was casted into a mold. And so what I'll do is scruff this up. You could use a sand pad like this. That's a little bit too much for this one. So what I'll do is use this scuff pad. And I'm just going to show a little how this works. I like using this because it can get in some of these nooks and crannies. This works great. And you just want to roughen that surface up. I'm just going to show you, you can see that difference on this black casting. So you can really see that. And then you don't want to leave that there, obviously. So what you want to do, and let me put some gloves on here. I'm going to use a little isopropyl alcohol and just wipe that off. Some paper towels here. So I'll take a little isopropyl alcohol. You can see that. more on there. But basically you just want to clean any of that dust off of there and let that flash off before you start to paint. So that's just a little bit on surface preparation. Put this down here. Also, if you're using a silicone mold, I just want to mention about release agents. If you're painting and you're having problems and you had casted this into a mold and used the release agent, that's a problem. So if you don't have to use a release agent, say in a silicone mold, a lot of times, don't use it. Um, if you do, you can use isopropyl alcohol and wipe that off, uh, some soap and water, make sure it's completely dry. There can be some other trickier pieces where, say, you're casting a urethane foam into a silicone mold. And uh, we have a release agent, Ease Release 2831, so it's more wax-based. That's harder to get off the surface, so you could use naphtha. And if you can't get naphtha, you could use Coleman fuel and uh, camping fuel, and that will take that off. So that's. That's something you could do. So that's real important with the release agents. Um, some of the problems some people do, they won't get the release off or they don't wait the full 48 hours. There are two problems, so you really have to watch out for that. So now I have a little example here. I'm gonna show you the scratch resistance. So this is our Smoothcast 300. This was sanded prior to rough up the surface, and then we applied the paint on here. This has been painted a couple weeks ago, so we have a Brand X over here, and we have the Maker Pro. So I'm gonna take a quarter just to show you the durability. I mean, the scratch resistance is amazing. And here's Brand X.
It's amazing. So you have to wait that full 48 hours, and actually after 48 hours, it, it even gets better. It gets even stronger, so, which is really great. All right, so painting substrates. Um, I mentioned about the release agent. This, this particular piece, what I'm going to do is a little demo here. This is polymer modified gypsum, or, or duo matrix neo, and I casted this into a silicone mold. I did not use a release agent, didn't need it. And the surface, I didn't even have to sand. It has a really nice matte, you know, not really slick, a little porous, if you will, but I like that for painting. So uh, what I'm going to do is a little, little painting demo here, just showing you some of the paint. So let me get my stuff out here. I'm going to need some water. I have some brushes. And let me get some paint. So I had paint dispensed in these containers prior to doing this. So let me just get these out here. I put a little top on here so the paint didn't dry out. Get some gloves on here. But what I'm going to do here is just an example when you're doing a rigid piece. Uh, you use the adhesion promoter. So that's very important. And you're going to brush this onto the surface, the complete surface. You're going to let it dry for at least a half an hour prior to painting. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the adhesion promoter. bit in here. Just going to do a little, that's plenty. Remember the adhesion promoter is for rigid surfaces and you do it, you apply it by itself to your rigid surface. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this on a brush, the adhesion promoter, and I'm just going to brush it on this surface. And uh, take a little more here. Get on these leaves, some of the grapes. Basically, you're going to coat the entire piece. And you're going to let that dry. Now, if you have a piece like this that has a lot of nooks and crannies in it, it could pool up in some of these areas. And you don't want to leave that there. If you wait that full 30 minutes, and that's still pooled up in those little areas, that's going to be a problem. So I like to dry the brush, just go in there and pick up those little pools so it's thin like the rest of the piece. So now you would apply this over this entire piece. I don't really have to do the entire piece right now. So instead of waiting for 30 minutes, I had another casting. I already applied the adhesion promoter. So this particular piece has the adhesion promoter already applied to the surface. And so I'm ready to paint with this. So what I'll do is get some cups here. Hey, Kevin, can I just interrupt you for a second? Sure. I have a question from Chad. Absolutely, have a question. Um, when you're applying the adhesion promoter, promoter the do you have any tips on how to uh, make sure you don't miss any spots uh, for myself it, it would depend on the size of the piece but a lot of times you can take the piece if you can hold it and look at it in different angles and you can see if there's a sheen there so this particular the piece I just did I mean you would be able to see that and on a darker piece it would probably be more visible than on a lighter one, but you can just tilt this and look at the, 
you know, the light reflected off it. And a lot of times you could pick up those areas that are still dry and you haven't coated it. So that's one way you could do it. Some bigger pieces, you may have to just walk around it and, uh, and, and look at it from different angles. So uh, it's a good question. So now what I'm gonna do is do a little painting here. So I am gonna take, let's see what size brush. I like this brush right here. This one. I'll take some paint. So I'm gonna have the reducer ready here too, because I like to use the reducer. So I'll start with these leaves. So I like this lime green, but I don't like it right out of the container. So I'm gonna take that lime green. I'm gonna take just a touch of brown, just to muddy it slightly. And then I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of reducer. And you could use as much reducer as you need. Whoops, forgot to take the lid off of this reducer. There we go. Here we go. So I'll add just a little bit. I'll just put a couple drops. And I'll thin that out. Mix it really well. Now I'll just try on this surface, right here, I'll do these leaves, so right here. So I'll do, do a couple leaves here, just get this on the surface, do this leaf. I'm not gonna paint the entire piece, but I'll show a couple different colors on here, a little paint technique that I like to do. Do another one over here. You have a lot more control, like I said, when it's thinner. And you can do multiple coatings on here, which is actually recommended, depending what look you're going for. So there, there's three leaves, just to show you there. And I'll put my brush here in the water. Now, typically brushes, I didn't mention brushes, like uh, brushes for acrylic paints work great. Make sure you always have your water available. You don't want the paint drying on your brush. So, uh, I mean, take care of your brushes. If you let it dry in there, you ruin the brush. All right, so that is the color for the leaves. Now what I wanna do is a little cooler color. I have some vines in here. So I will take, I use the same brush. I like this brush. I like to have some paper towel here. All right, so I'll take a little the phthalo green. But I don't like it right out of the container. So I'm gonna neutralize that a little bit. I am gonna take a little bit of brown, just a little bit. But then when I really wanna neutralize it, I'm gonna take a little bit of orange. You need more than that. You can see. It's going to kill the chrome on that, so it's not going to be as strong. And I, I usually do not like to use paint right out of the tube, depending what application it is, but I like to neutralize it a little bit. So th this is helping. And basically, you're, you're muddying that a little bit. I'm going to get that a little more. All right, now what I want to do is add a little reducer, because I want this thinner. Let's put a couple drops in there. I'll test my color on this paper towel. That's kind of dark. I'm going to add a little white. So let's see. There's my white. Just want to lighten it slightly. And this is just on the fly, kind of mixing colors, getting something that I like. I'm going to neutralize it even more, even more. There we go. That looks better. I'm going to thin it a little bit more. There we go. All right, that'll work. So I'm just going to apply this now to these vines right over here. 
And I'm going to do this very loose, kind of quick. But I just want to get that completely covered there. So I'm just going to add this cooler green to these vines. I can be kind of loose because the technique I'm using on this, I'll be going over that on the bottom. I'll just do these right here. And this bigger one. Like I said, the thinner layers, you have a lot more control. Depends on your application, obviously. If you're doing a big flat piece and you need a, a flat color, you do a couple layers and you can do it right out of the container if that's the color you want. So that's just showing some of the, le uh, some of the vines there. So I'll clean my brush off. And I'm going to do some grapes. So um, I, let's see. I have, let's see, I'm going to do violet. Let me do violet here. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this violet and put it in a cup. I don't really need a lot for this example. And then I'll neutralize that a little bit. Let's see. Put this back. Get my brush here. Paper towel. Get some of that green off of there. All right, so now I have this purple. Let me see what it looks like right here. That's pretty strong. I can, so I don't mind that right out of the container. Usually I don't. I'm gonna add a couple drops of reducer. Just thin a little bit of it here. That'll work. So now I'm just going to brush this on for the grapes. And you could do a variety of different colors for these grapes, but you can go a little darker there in the grooves. And I'll just do this one set here so you get an idea. And this is, I'm just doing this really quickly. So that, that's, I don't have to do any more on this, but I just wanted to show you a little uh, of the colors here using the reducer. And uh, one thing I, I have here is another casting that I painted the leaves, the vines, and the grapes. So let me show that to you. They're already done. So here they are. So what I'm going to do now is add a dark accent. So what I'll do is mix a little paint here. It's going to be a brown. I want a dark color. I want it to make this pop. So I will mix some brown. A little more than that. And then I like to, I'm going to put just a tinge, a little bit of black. I want it to be dark. I don't want a solid black. I just want a really dark color or a dark muted brown. I use a little green. I like to neutralize things. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I think. Let me test it here on my... Yeah, that'll work. And then I'm going to use a little reducer in here again. A couple drops. Clean my brush off. And what I'm going to do here is just add a dark accent on here. So, but when I do this, let me just get this ready. I want to have some paper towel, and I'm just going to wipe it off. And, uh, and you can see it'll retain 
some little accents around the piece, but I wouldn't do this technique over the whole piece because it'll start to dry. I'll do a little section at a time. So let's see. I'll start here. So if I do this right here, you can see, I just do this edge. But now I'll come in here and I'll, even if I go over this, just a little bit, but then what you want to do is take this paper towel and uh, I'll go over the whole thing. And I'll take the paper towel and wipe that off. You can see that. I can even take a little water, lighten that. And you can get little accents around the piece. But like I said, you have to do this a little section at a time. Otherwise, it would dry too quickly. You have that adhesion promoter on there. You can darken this a little bit more. And like I said, I'm not going to do this entire piece. I just wanted to show you. There's a little example here. So you can see how that dark accent makes that pop. And it's just a little quick technique. So, oh, one other thing I forgot I want to do on here. And uh, in the fluorescent line, we have 12 colors, but there's also some top coats. There is a black light clear gloss, and there is a black light clear matte. And if you wanted a satin look, you could mix a little of each to get a satin look. So here, I'm just going to take a little bit of the gloss in a little cup here. And what I'm going to do is apply that over the grapes. And it's just going to add a little, little sheen to that. And, uh, you know, it'll add a little bit more. Let's see. Pop this open here. I just need a very little bit. That's plenty. So now I am just going to take this little brush and apply this over here. Now say you were doing a flexible piece and you wanted to use this. If you use this clear coat, this gloss clear coat or the matte, you would have to mix the flexor with that. So here I'm not doing that. This is on a rigid piece. So I'll just loosely go over these grapes. And I have a completed piece that I'll show you. All right. So that. Take care of your brushes. You always got to put them in the water. So that is just the painting there. I added the Remember, this started with the adhesion promoter. You let it dry for a half an hour. Then I mixed my paints, and I applied my paints. And then I did the dark accent and wiped off the surface. And then I just applied a, a gloss clear coat, just a black light gloss clear coat. And even though that's really made for the fluorescence, that'll help the fluorescent colors stay, um, you can use it for this. So that's what I, I did. So I have a, a finished casting. It's all painted and just going to show you. This is, this is what it would look like. And it has that, that sheen to the grapes. So you can see. Yeah, just a little technique, you know. And uh, on a rigid casting. So that, that's the example of painting on a rigid piece. So remember, it's so important you have the adhesion promoter by itself that you apply to that clean, rigid surface. You have to let it dry for a half an hour. And uh, if you have any details, like I said, you know, that pools up in there, clean that out of those little pitfalls there, those little grooves or nooks and crannies. So, uh, so that is the example of painting a rigid. So now I am going to go on to painting a flexible piece. So let me remove these, these paints. 
we re remove these. I'll put these over here. And we'll do a flexible piece. So I have some other colors here. So these, a little brighter colors here. Now, what I did here, you have to mix the flex additive with the Maker Pro paints in a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume. So these first couple colors that I'm taking the tops off here, these were pre-mixed, so I already added the flex additive there, but I'll show you these two, uh, what I mean about the mix ratio. So what you want to do, right here, we have a red, So I am going to take some flex additive right here. And I'm going to mix it a one-to-one, -one, so very easy. Two, two cups, the same level, the paint and the flex additive. And then you're going to mix those together. So let's see here. Looks about right. That's, that's good right there. Okay, and then I'll take a little mixing stick right here. And I'm just going to add this here. And this flex additive is going to do nothing to the paint to change the color. So just keep that in mind. You have to mix it really well. And you'll get your color back. Because it, uh, it's more of a, a translucent white. And you can see as I mix it, the color is coming back. And that color is already. I did that to these other four colors. And I'll show it to you again, just so you can see. For this color. A little bit more. Ah, a little messy there. If you're a painter, sometimes it gets a little messy. All right, so now I'll mix this up, and then I'm going to paint a flexible casting that I have. So you're going to mix this completely, and you'll see the color come back. So it's really important the difference between the adhesion promoter and the flex. The adhesion promoter you use by itself when you apply that to a rigid surface. The flex additive, you have to mix it with the paint, and then you would apply that. And you don't mix up using the adhesion promoter and then using the flex on a piece either. So don't do that either. That's not what they're for. So uh, you'll see this color starting to come back. So I'll know that it's completely mixed when I get that consistent color. Let's see. That looks pretty good. So that's my colors. So now I'm going to paint a piece here. So I'll show you. Just get some new gloves on. And then the piece I'm going to paint on is a urethane rubber. It is our Simpac 60 a 60A durometer, and uh, so I'll show you how flexible that is, and uh, right here, this is the piece, so it's a little sunburst, so using the yellows, oranges, and reds will work good for this piece. Hey Kevin, I have a question in chat about adding uh, mica powder or cast magic. To the paint? The question was, can you add mica powder or cast magic? It, yes, you could. I've used it before, and on this duck particularly, if you look on the top of the head, I did that. So I did it 
when I was mostly done painting, and I mixed it, and it was a very dry consistency. So it was enough that I could apply it, but it wasn't real liquid, and uh, I applied that to surface. And it worked out well, so you can definitely do that. Good question. So here is the Simpac 60, very flexible piece. So I'm just going to do a really simple, quick little color demo in here. Let's see what brush I'll use. I like that brush that I used before. Like I said, take care of your brushes. All right, so I'm going to take the yellow. Now, this was all pre-mixed. So I'm just going to, since I pre-mixed that, I am just going to just mix it a little and just double check, make sure it's all fine. And that looks pretty good. I didn't do that too long ago. So now what I'll do is just take a little bit of this yellow. I'm going to put this yellow on the face, in the center. So I want that to kind of be the brighter area. Like that. And kind of go over there, just kind of, that would be my center type of color. So what I'll do is just add a little bit more here. Real quickly. And then what I did was have a value here of the oranges just getting slightly darker. So this one right here was actually a mixture of the orange and uh, some yellow. So I'll just do this here so I get a, like a transition. You can see. Just real on this edge here. And uh, I mean, it applies real smooth. This has the flex additives added to it. And uh, now, if you're in that creative zone and you realize you didn't mix a color, you know, you could just mix that color up. Say it was a new color, you mix it up, and you can actually just take the uh, Flex additive and try to gauge that one to one. If you if you're on that, you're in that creative zone and, and you don't want to stop and measure a level. As long as you know it's a one to one and you try to match that as close as you can. So now I'm going to go now with a little little more of the orange here. And uh, I'm going to add some in the cheeks here, just a little there. A little bit more of the straight. I'm going to actually add this to the center of this. The straight. And some of these pieces sticking out. And I, I forgot to add yellow on the tips here. I wanted to do that. So this is kind of a raised surface. It makes it easier to paint. I just hit that top surface. Then what I'm going to do is take the red. That's my darker accent. I'm going to add this to this edge. So it'll make it pop a little bit more. So this is just a little quick example so you get an idea. And actually what you could do is kind of get a little dry brush technique going here. And uh, if you want to get the orange on those eyes, that might be kind of nice actually. Let me try that. Kind of a... And on the eyebrows. And obviously, I'm doing this kind of quickly. If I were really taking my time, I could go over that. And I can go over with another layer on that also. So the only other color I'm going to show you here, just to make that pop more, is using a blue. I think I have the ultramarine blue here. 
right here. So what I'm going to do is just add this as an accent right in here. And remember, you can do multiple layers. It's actually re recommended doing two to three layers. It'll build up that color. And this is just a kind of a quick example. Just showing you. I'll do one more here. This one. Maybe one here. Oops. So what I'll do now is just clean my brush off. I just want to do a quick little demo to show how to mix and apply the flex additive. And I actually have a completed piece here. So I'll show you. This is a Simpac 60. So this was painted uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, so that's kind of the piece you have right here that we started. So it's very flexible. You can see, and it's not cracking. I mean, the paint works great. So uh, that's a great, a great paint to use on a flexible surface, and you can use it on rigid. So, um, so what? In closing, uh, this is just a, a quick YouTube live on the standard colors. Um, so in closing, I just want to, what did we cover today and why would you use Maker Pro paints? So remember, I mentioned in the beginning, they are water-based, UV resistant, there's no VOCs, they are class A flame rated, they dry to a matte finish, which is great, I love that as a painter. They can be used on rigid and flexible surfaces, which we did these little demos, so don't mix that up. It's simple, but don't confuse it. So you want to use the adhesion promoter by itself on a rigid surface. The, the flex additive, you will mix with the paints on a one-to-one -one mix ratio and then apply that onto your surface. So it can be brushed, it can be rolled, it can be sprayed. You can use Maker Pro paints indoors or outdoors. And there's quite a selection. You have the 12 colors in the fluorescent line, and you have 18 in the standard line, and you have four metallics. And uh, let me just show you, I have these metallics here I forgot to show you. That is the copper, that is the silver. There's actually a white metallic, and there is a gold. So, uh, Quite a selection there of colors. So we also covered what industries and applications use Maker Pro Paint. And uh, like I said, the theme parks like Disney and Universal use it. So, uh, you know, that, that says some. Surface preparation we covered. The difference between flex additive and adhesion promoter, applying the adhesion promoter to rigid surface um, I showed you. Kevin, I'm just going to sure. interrupt with one more question from sure. the chat. Uh, Semi-rigid plastics. Okay. Would you treat them like a rigid surface where you're That's a good question. Semi-rigid plastics, because uh, there can be a variety. Depends on the thickness of the piece. Um, you, a lot of the, let's see, I have a semi-rigid here. I showed you earlier. It says cosplay piece. This is a 57D. Adhesion promoter was used on this. Because even though it's slight flex, it's more rigid than flex. So you have to look at each particular piece and uh, determine what would be best. If it's a very flexible piece like uh, the flex foam, you know, definitely go with the flex. If it's a semi-rigid, you know, even though this is a, a not too thick, it, it's a 57D uh, hardness, so it's still kind of hard, just has a slight flex. So I would just say, look at the piece you're doing, see the thickness of it, and uh, more than likely, if it's, it's a pretty hard surface, I would kind of go with the adhesion promoter. So we also covered the using the Maker Pro Paint Reducer right here and thinning. Uh, you can use distilled water like I mentioned. If you're going to spray, I, I would recommend the reducer. It's better for spray applications than the distilled water. So 
But that really covers the basics and the standard line of Maker Pro Paint. So I want to thank you for viewing this demonstration. And I hope this helps you with your next painting project. And if you're really wondering how good this works, just get a little bit and test it. It really works great. Be sure to view our upcoming Smooth On Live demonstrations using Maker Pro Paint. We're going to have some others. We're going to cover the fluorescence for one. We're going to cover the metallics. And we're also going to have a Maker Pro um, YouTube Live on the spraying application with Maker Pro Paint. So the next YouTube Live for Smooth On will be life casting. And that's going to be on March 27th. Also, another thing uh, you might want to check out on the Smooth On website, uh, look for information about a brand new seminar. It's a two-day cosplay, hands-on seminar. And that is June 12th and 13th. So uh, sign up before you know, all the seats are taken. And I just want to thank you, and uh, you have a great day.